Good morning, everyone. And merry, happy Christmas Eve. It's, it's good to see visitors here this morning. Um, you're going to be entertained by the Fa La La singer, so there will be some of you out there to kind of applaud us when we get through singing. We're, we're you know, we uh, we make a joyful noise as they as they describe, especially in the Methodist hymnal. But uh, those of you who are watching us, um, we, it's good that you can gather together with us. And just to remind everybody, uh, we're going to have a big Christmas Eve service. Uh, seven o'clock tonight, and uh, ending with the silent night uh, sung in German in the last verse. It's always a beautiful, beautiful service. So if any of you want to come out tonight, um, we'd love to have you. So at this time, I'm going to let Patty lead forward with any announcements and beginning of the service. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, Merry Christmas to all. A few announcements that I have is to remind everyone we're still welcoming the hats, gloves, mittens, and scarves for under our tree for the needy, and reminding you to pick up your giving envelopes that are down in uh, the basement. So please remember to pick those up and take in along anyone that you might be visiting over the holiday season that cannot be here. There is no coffee hour so that everyone can go home and enjoy their festivities today and uh, going into tomorrow. And again, a reminder this evening, the 7 o'clock service, let's come together, sing, and welcome our Lord's birth. Any other announcements for the church? Ron? Any other announcements for the church tonight, today? We also want to wish Dennis Stepman a happy birthday. He's not with us right now, but he will be here this evening. And then let's stand for our call to worship. Joy to the world. Then, this then, is the accumulation of our years of waiting. In the glow of the season, we feel the warmth of deep and quiet joy. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let us our songs employ. Let us sing in the glory of God. Let us sing in the name of Christ, who offers us hope in the prison of despair. Peace in the chaos of life. God's love graciously, silently offered. And heaven and nature sing. Let's join together in our opening prayer. O oh God, this Advent season is a time when your light radiates through the world. And as much as we can, let us be bright for you. Shine your light through us. Fill us with your light as though we were lighthouses on the shore. Use us to guide others and keep them from danger. Be present with us, God, throughout the Advent season as we live and worship in our wait for the one who is the light of the world. Amen. And now our opening hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Yeah. 
child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings sound. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Would you please be seated? In our services this morning, as well as our candlelight service tonight at 7, we celebrate the coming of Jesus into our midst. And I think I think about that if we just stop in our busyness of the season to really wrap our minds around the fact that the Lord of the universe would come to share our human lot, to show us just how much we are loved. If we could just get that, that would be the greatest gift that we could, that we could ever receive. But also, there's a gift of forgiveness. He loves us that much. So in the spirit of confession at this time, would you please join together with me? in our prayer of confession. Let us pray together. God of light, who shines in deepest darkness, we hear you calling us out of hopelessness into hope, but sometimes distracted from hearing your call. We might be afraid of taking chances. We are sometimes reluctant to follow your light because it might lead us to places where we need this. Give us the strength to love boldly and care deeply, and to extend to others a needed, outstretched hand. Amen. Would you please join me in our assurance of pardon? Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are those who seek the face of God, Everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. Blessed are those who ask for forgiveness, for they shall be forgiven. Blessed are they who repent, for they shall be freed to live fully in the present. moments and greet each other in Christian love, pass the peace of Christ, and give each other a holy hug. And when I circle this at the end of our time together, that means we get started in our song. <laughs>
people say, oh, I gotta start this song. Yeah. So we're trying to. It gets a little long. I know. Please be seated. Today we light the fourth Advent candle, the angel's candle. This candle is offered in honor of the angels who told the good news to the shepherds. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward all. The angels sang with joy so that all who could hear were filled with joy in honor of all the angels who continue to proclaim the good news of joy, we light this candle. Dear God, you surround us with your angel of love so that we are able to live a life filled with joy Thank you for these angels and help us to become angels of love for others. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. Again, the Lord spoke to Azza and saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep in, as shoal or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, it is too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. That's such an awesome worship team. You've been a busy one this morning, Patty. Thank you so much. Our gospel lesson, of course, is Luke's version, just a portion. We'll be reading the same portion actually tonight at our candlelight service when we do something else. Luke 2, verses 1 through 7, most of us know these words, but it's good to hear them again and again. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus and that the whole world should be enrolled. 
This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. Now, the Fa La La singers, we don't know what songs we're going to sing yet. Maybe Marge has an idea. It's time for us to sing, so we'll figure out two or three songs.
Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Oh God, may the words which I'm about to utter and the privilege that I now assume be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Well, this is kind of the theme, what we just talked about a minute ago. The old Christmas rush. So we dash away, dash away. We're not talking reindeer here. Going from store to store or Amazon, Amazon order, Amazon order, whatever it is you do these days. Website to website, just to find the right gifts, right? Matter of fact, I got my hair cut the other day in Richfield, and the gentleman next to me in the, cha in the, in the chair, he said, I haven't gotten something from my wife yet, and this was just a few days ago. And, and, and the gals were saying, the two gals were there, and they said, you know what? They, they, they went, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And he saved my marriage, is what he said. So we're having a conversation. And uh, they said, you know, every woman loves a Pandora's bracelet. Well, I, I didn't know what it was. And Grace said, ah, that's not really my thing. And they said, you can probably get them at Mayfair Mall, you know. And then you can get, you can get the, art, you know, the little uh, things that go on it, the little charms or whatever. And they said, those charms are more expensive than a bracelet sometimes. And, and the gal who was cutting my hair, she said, you know what? Uh, I'll meet you there at 1230. I want one too. So, <laughs> but uh, I tell you, it was... Uh, but it's good, and it turns out this guy is, uh, his dad's a pastor for 50 years, uh, his brothers are pastors, and he said, you know, I'm back on the a right track now. So shook his hand and gave him my card, and it's an interesting thing, but rushing, or getting that last minute Christmas present. Clara Knoll was rushing her grandchildren into the, into the car after shopping, and my guess is, uh, I certainly know that somebody back there in the back in that corner knows what, trying to get the kids all rounded up and, and, you know, into the cart to go here and there. And as she was closing the door to the car, four-year-old Jason said, Grandma, Susie has something in her pocket. And he reached into Susie's pocket, because she was young, and pulled out a red barrette. Though she was tired, Clara knew it was important for Susie to take the barrette back into the store where she had picked it up, because it was pretty. And apologized to the manager and put the item back where she had found it. So they did just that. Just after that, they stopped for a few quick groceries at the checkout, the clerk asked, um, have you kids been good so that Santa will come? Big brother Jason, of course, said, I've been very good, but my sister just robbed a store. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Well, I'm sure that all of our kids and grandkids have been very good. Somebody asked me, because I like to ruck for exercise, uh, he's a friend of mine, a Jewish fellow, uh, said, he says, is that a bag of coal? And I said, I need, would probably need a much bigger bag, but that's another story. I'm, I'm sure our, our kids have been very, and grandkids have been very good. As exciting as the holiday is for our kids and grandkids, can you imagine how exciting, if you could wrap our minds around it, the coming of baby Jesus was for those awaiting for the hope of a Messiah that they've been waiting for many, many years. As impatient as our kids and grandkids are for the season to arrive, can you imagine how long the people of Palestine and elsewhere in the world had yearned for the Prince of Peace to enter our world? And we need that today, don't we? Patience. It took a lot of patience. There was a man in Wales a number of years ago who sought the affection for 42 years of a certain woman. He was not married. She wasn't either. Finally, in 1985, on his 43rd attempt to, to try and get her attention, shall we say, she said yes. By then, they were 74 years old, both of them. Every week for more than 40 years, this rather shy man slipped a weekly love letter under his neighbor's door. And after writing 2,000, 184 love letters without ever getting a response, this persistent older gentleman finally summoned up enough courage to present himself in person and knock on her door. He knocked on the door of the reluctant lady and asked for her hand if they could go out on a date. To his delight and surprise, she accepted. Makes you kind of wonder, though, if he had, had made the personal visit sooner, he might still have said yes sooner. There's something about a personal visit, isn't there? That's the point. That's what we're all about. And well over 2,000 years ago, God made a personal visit. 
wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Luke's gospel, I'll share it again. Because it's one of those stories, we've all heard it many times, we probably can repeat it in our minds, but it never gets old. It was about the same time that Augustus Caesar sent out an order to all the people in the countries that were under the Roman rule. The order said that everybody's name had to be put on a list. This was the first counting of the people while Quirinius was governor. And by the way, Quirinius was not a good and kind governor. He was governor of Syria. Everybody traveled to their hometowns to have their name put on the list. So Joseph left Nazareth, a town in Galilee, and went to the town of Bethlehem in Judea. It was known as a town of David. Joseph went there because he was from the family of David. Joseph registered Mary because she was engaged to marry him. She was now pregnant. While Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have the baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him well, and laid him in a box where cattle fed. She put him there because the guest room was full. Some of us in our church family and those of you who are watching enjoy the music of Trans-Siberian Orchestra and maybe even the Fa-La-La singers, although we're not on the same caliber as the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Especially the ornament, this, the song that they sing, What Child Is This? It's an incredibly powerful song if you listen to the lyrics. The song is playing as I, write, as I was writing this message. A paragraph of the lyrics really speak to the story of Jesus' birth, and I've kind of alluded to this throughout this season. And they go like this. Tell me how many times can this story be told? After all of these years, it should all sound so old, but it somehow rings true in the back of my mind as I search for a dream that words can no longer define. Our hearts are deeply touched that there was no room in the inn. As a kid, I was, you know, as, as, even as an adult, but as a kid, you know, I was really, that really bothered me, you know? Why couldn't they, this was Jesus. Those words resonate within human hearts in many, many years later. So we ask ourselves, we prepare ourselves for yet another Christmas, we ask, is there room for Christ in our world today? Is there room for Christ in our heart? Are we making room in all our busyness? Is there room in our hearts to accept him? There are so many things that, that crowd him out. We don't intend to, but it happens. We're so busy this time of year that we long for the time to simply sit down and catch our breath. Be still and know that I am God. And allow that silent, mysterious power of this season to wash over us, to embrace us, and surround us with light. Author Max Locato, in his book, The Applause of Heaven, tells the story of how busyness can cause us to shut Christ out. And by the way, I'll be telling, reading one of Locato's stories tonight is our message. He tells a legend about an emperor in India who built this incredibly magnificent temple, temple in memory of his second wife. You probably know what I'm referring to. It's the Taj Mahal. The building was started in 1631, and it took over 20,000 people working for about, get this, 22 years to complete. The legend says that the emperor wanted the temple to be built as, gra as a grand dramatic symbol of his love for his wife. He wanted it to be big to show how big his love was. Her coffin was placed in the center of a large parcel of land and the construction of the temple was built around it. Remember, 22 years. No expense was spared. But the weeks turned to months and then years and the Shah became so engrossed with the project that he almost forgot all about his wife. He was so engrossed in the project. His obsession with building this temple, that he'd lost reason for doing it in the first place. Then late one evening, when while hurriedly walking from one side of the construction site to the other, he accidentally bumped his leg against a wooden box. He was irritated by this. Impatiently, he brushed the dust from his leg and ordered the workers to throw the box out, which nearly happened. The emperor did not realize that the box held the precious remains of his beloved wife. Huh, he almost threw her out. Have we become so busy that we've almost forgotten him? I don't think so, but with so much going on in our contemporary lives, it might be easy to, to, 
to, to keep Christ out, to set him aside in our busyness. Years ago in a story in the Christian century, Harriet Ritchie wrote a story about an incident in her family's life that revealed to her the true nature of Christmas. Following their church's Christmas, evening Christmas Eve service, like we'll be having, Harriet's family decided to stop somewhere for a late night breakfast. The only place that was open on Christmas Eve, that time of year, guess it, truck stop. It was a truck stop at a nearby interstate junction. A few big diesel trucks were rumbling outside. Inside, a few truckers sat at the counter. A jukebox was playing a country song that went something like this. When you leave, walk out backwards so I'll think you're coming in. On the front window, there was a string of multicolored blinking Christmas lights. It was a pretty modest display. The place smelled like a diner with strong coffee and the smell of fried food and stale cigarette smoke. A man who had lost an arm stood behind the counter. Family had come from the Christmas Eve service, squeezed into a booth, all of them. A waitress named Rita came walking over. She managed a weary smile and handed them menus. Harriet felt like some kind of a snob. She and her family had just come from a beautiful Christmas Eve service and after that, and, and after that home. But as she sat there staring out at the truck stop window, an old Volkswagen van came dr driving up. No, it wasn't anybody pulling an Airstream trailer. <laughs> a young man with a beard and wearing jeans got out. He walked around and opened the door for a young woman holding a baby. They hurried inside and took a booth nearby. When Rita the waitress took their order, the baby began to cry, and neither of the young parents could, could pacify, could quiet the child. Rita reached over, held out her arm, sat down. She said, sit down and drink your coffee, hon. Let me see what I can do. I, can, I, I think we've all encountered, especially in those times you stop at a truck stop. I've, we've met people like that. Been there and done that. Not their first rodeo. It was evident that Rita had done this before with her own brood. She began talking to the baby and walking around with it in her arms. And she showed the baby to one of the truckers who began whistling and making silly faces from a big old tough trucker. The baby stopped crying. The waitress showed the baby the blinking lights on the window and the lights in a jukebox. She brought the baby back to Harriet's table. Just look at this little darling, she said. Mine are all big and grown. The guy who worked behind the counter brought a pot of coffee to Harriet's table. And as he refilled their mugs, Harriet felt tears welling up in her eyes. Her husband wanted to know what was wrong. Nothing, just, just Christmas. Just Christmas, she told him. Reaching in her purse for a Kleenex and a quarter, go see if you can find a Christmas song on a jukebox. She told the children when they were gone, Harriet said, he'd come, wouldn't he? He'd come, wouldn't he? Who, her husband asked. Jesus, Harriet said. If Jesus was born in this town tonight, and if the choices were our neighborhood, the church, or this truck stop, it would be here, wouldn't it? Because there was no room. Her husband didn't answer her right away, but looked around the place, looked at the people, and finally he said, either here or a homeless shelter. That's what bothers me, Harriet said. When we first got here, I felt sorry for these people because some of them might not be going home to their neighbors where the houses have candles in the windows and wreaths on the door and trees. But in a way, I think this is where Christmas is, and I wonder if I truly belong. As they walked to the car, her husband put his arm around her. Remember, he reminded her. The angel said, bring good news of great, I bring good news of great joy to all people. He comes for us. He comes for all people, for rich, for poor, young and old. And as we prepare ourselves for his coming, let us make room in our busy lives, our busy hearts and minds for his coming. And if we can do that just for a few moments, it'll be the most important and memorable Christmas we will ever have. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you for 
coming to us again and again and again. Help us, God, to, to still our minds and our hearts to know that you're still whispering words of love. Words that say, for lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. We thank you, God. Amen. This time, as I traditionally do, I'm going to walk around and see what prayers of joy or concern would you like to lift up. Prayers of joy or concern. Prayers of joy for the Father La Singers. This may be his last Christmas, probably. And so he, he and Lori are in my hearts as well. Prayers for the world, because the world is such a mess. They can't even have Christmas services in Bethlehem, it's my understanding, because of the mess in the Middle East. And my brothers and sisters in Ukraine, that's what I call them, that's what they call me, because we've been there so many times. They, early this morning, because it's eight hours later there, were sending greetings of joy in the midst of that horror that's still going on. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, you are a great and awesome God. You hear all of our prayers. You are the great healer of heart and mind and soul. God, help us to make room in our hearts for you. You know our thoughts, our prayers, our hearts before we even mention anything. You stand at the door and knock. Pray, God, that we open because you whisper words of comfort for those who need comforted. Those who are having medical procedures, we pray for a positive outcome. For those who are struggling with health issues, not knowing where that may leave, who may be afraid. Pray that they know your comfort and that through us they know your comfort and peace as well. We thank you, God, that at the darkest time of the year, when it's dreary, we bring light that cannot be overcome, not even by the darkness itself. We thank you, God, for being the light of the world. And we thank you that you call us to be the light of the world as well. And now, gracious God, we together pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Freely has God given to us and gives to us again and again and again. Out of gifts, out of love, let us give our thanks in our morning offering at this time, giving thanks to God for God being present, for God coming into our midst.
which we, your people, do offer up to you. Grant that the causes to which they are devoted be causes of love given to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, we pray, we share. Shall cease day. 